Oh boy. Is this going to be one of those years, you guys? <laughs> Is this going to be one of those Notre Dame years? Come on, man. I, I, more. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. We're three weeks from this season. That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back to more bad news for Notre Dame football. Starting left tackle out for the year already. And we're not even near game one edition of the always Irish. Nightmare rolls along. Shout. As always, you can find the program on YouTube. Uh, thanks for being here. Do it. Subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. Notifications on. That way you're alerted. Every time a new, the next bad thing happens, we'll be here to cover it right away. Twitter. Search bar. Always Irish or at Always Irish Inc. Emails. Always Irish. At gmail.com. Audio only. Anywhere you want it. You can get it if you don't want to see my face. Nobody, nobody can blame you for that. The call-in lines, 312. I can't believe this is our life. The call-in lines, 312, no, 312, 988, 15. Call, tell Johnny all the bad Notre Dame stuff you've heard and seen. I really do need that NIL deal with the yoga studio or something. Sports Illustrated, Notre Dame, <laughs> Fighting Irish. Google it, read all about it. We got articles every day, every which way. We have a lot to say. It's a beautiful thing. Patreon, Nick, I'm a slash, always Irish. Former captain, Eda leading tackler, Mike Gould's me and myself breaking it all down. Be there, be square. All right. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, folks. Woo. And if you're wondering where the chain is, the chain only comes out for when I'm in a good mood or good things are happening. There ain't no chain this time. Being a Notre Dame fan, it's not for the faint of heart. It's just not. You're worried about Deuce. You're worried about the wide receiver recruiting. You're worried about other. Oh, there's rumors that other recruits are talking about leaving. You're worried about all of that. But then you say, call time out on that. 24 is going to be a good year. Notre Dame's in good shape. We expect to have a really good program. Like, let's focus on the team this year and try to put aside some of the recruiting anxieties for a little bit. Focus on the team that we have, the good team we have ahead of us. Okay, let's try and do that. So then you get to do that. And then you're like, well, opening game, A&M, their strength is the defensive line, the defensive front, the rush coming off the edge there. That's their, their strength. One of the things I'm mo most worried about, most Notre Dame fans are worried about, Notre Dame's offensive line, how are they going to hang out? Boom! Starting left tackle, Jagasaw out for the year. Upper body injury happened over the weekend already. Already! We didn't even get one full week into spring ball, or spring ball, summer, fall, camp, whatever season it is, you didn't even get one full weekend. One full weekend is Wednesday to Wednesday. We didn't even get to Wednesday, and you're down one starter. I would argue the most important starter on the offensive line, the left tackle protecting the blind side. You know, the movie, Lou Holtz was in it, protecting the blind side. You didn't even get a weekend, and you're down your starting tackle already. And it's one of the, it was, even if he was healthy, it was going to be one of the biggest worries on the program. It's unbelievable, folks. It's it's just, it's unbelievable. All righty then. Things are off to a great start. This was already a top area of concern before this. And then I had a note. I had a note. And I don't think I got to it in the morning show because a lot of other stuff popped up. But I had a note saying, all right, well, if Jagasa said a left tackle, we feel pretty good about it. And then you feel good about Emil Wagner over on the right side. Then, then does that just mean that we... <laughs> 
I hate this so much. But I was looking at it saying I can't even get through it. If you feel good about him on the left side, and you feel good that you are running with Wagner on the right side at those tackle spots, then what would you be looking at? Just what you're going to do in that left guard spot with Coogan Spindler, what you're going to do at that left guard spot. Like, I was starting to get around the idea of like, all right, this is kind of settling in. And if you feel good about the young big boy out there at right tackle with, with Wagner, and you didn't even mess with Baker there to start the year. Like they literally, Wagner ran out there with the ones right away. And it seemed like it's his job to lose that kind of thing. And then you felt good at left tackle with Jags. Then you're looking at the left guard spot and you're going, okay, maybe I could feel better about this. Maybe I don't have to have that level of anxiety that I had. Like maybe it's just not that bad. There goes that idea. There goes that idea. Like, before this, it was like, okay, I'm feeling better about this. There's less moving parts and less starters to starting roles to divvy out than I was worried about. And it turned into like, okay, how good can they be? Right? Rather, rather than just like who it's going to be or whatever, it's like, okay, if this is what we're doing, how good could it be? Now that's out the window. Nothing comes early, man. Or nothing comes easy, rather. Nothing comes easy for Notre Dame. So here we are. That's out the window. Many people, including Goolsby, didn't really think he was a natural left tackle anyways. If you're looking for a silver lining, maybe this allows that all to become a reality when he returns. Him moving inside to a guard role and doing something different. Like maybe this forces you to have to think about that as the next plan of what this is going to be. So what are you going to do now? Do you move Wagner over to left tackle? And then you have a Gerby Lambert, right? Didn't early enroll Lee, but coming in off the street hot. So do, do you move Wagner over to left tackle? And then have a Gerby versus Tosh battle at right tackle now. And then you still have that guard thing you're feeling through. And I guess you could argue, there's, there's an argument here that long term, this may be the best thing that could happen for that line developing, having to do this. But short term, right when you felt like you had uh, some stability there, for the most part, now you don't have it. It's just, <laughs> man, it's always something. I'll, I said it before, I'm going to say it again. Every single time, every single time, my phone blows up. It's only two things. Somebody I know is deceased, recently deceased, or Bad Notre Dame news, something stupid happened with Notre Dame. That's it. Nobody ever blows up my phone to go invite me to do something fun. Nobody ever blows up my phone, 80 texts deep, telling me good news. The only time my phone goes off like this, somebody I know is dead or and or there's bad Notre Dame news. <laughs> It is, uh, it's been a wild morning over here at the Always Irish Studios. <laughs> oh my God, you guys, nothing gets easier. Right when you were like, okay, recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. We're all worried about, is this guy going to leave? Is this guy going to leave? How are we going to do recruiting? Okay, let's focus on this year's team that's going to be really good. But, but, but bad news, right when, he, right when I tried, I literally... I was flipping the switch in my brain off the recruiting stress into off the recruiting stress into like this year and what it's, it's going to be good. And then you get this news. And so you got him out, you got Rubio out and that hurts you for like that 
he does have a little attitude, a little edge, help you against the run out there, whatever. So you lose that piece of depth. Now you lose this. Now you could argue. I, I don't know. If you're one of those people that didn't think Jags was a natural tackle, you could argue that in the long run, this is going to be beneficial because it'll force you to have to make those adjustments sooner than you want to. If that means that a guy like Lambert right off the right off the, the train as a freshman has got to get out there earlier than he's ready and you just jumpstart that, if you jumpstart that, you could argue long-term that's going to be what's best for the line. Obviously, Jagasaw not developing this year is not going to be good for the line, but the other spots. And, and so, I don't know. And so if you do this switch, it's going to be interesting to see, can Gerby Lambert, uh, is it going to be Tosh then? Because Gerby wasn't even an early enrollee. Is he going to be ready for that? Like throwing him into AM when he's right off the bus, wasn't here through spring or any of that stuff? That's tough. Do you do that? I don't know. That's tough. So I don't know, you guys. Uh, being a Notre Dame fan, I'm telling you, man, it is not for the faint of heart. You, I mean, every time you take a breather, you turn around, there's something else hitting you smack dab in the face. Every time you turn around, <clears throat> there is something in you in the face. It never ends. If it ain't recruiting, it's something else. So that's the news on a Monday. Have a good one. Let me know what you think.